dependency injection does not mandate who will compose. Okay, so there is no, there is no stipulation as to who is going to compose the dependencies. Dependency injection stops here. It says the definition of dependency injection is the object's constructor or some part of the API of the object will make a full disclosure of the things it needs and it will free itself of all responsibility of making those or procuring those. Those things are automatically the responsibility of somewhere else, somebody else outside the dependent object. And dependency injection has nothing to do with a fancy framework like Unity or Autofact. It's just the technique of making a full disclosure of dependencies and that has several advantages as we've seen. Sorry, you had a question, sir. Yeah, I was just, you were saying earlier about putting everything in the constructor. Yeah. And earlier you were talking about how you want your objects to relate to real world objects. Yes. So in the real world you can have a coffee maker without water and coffee in it. Yes. Or you can put only water in it. Yes. So shouldn't we actually still want those to be able to be separated? Yes. Uh. Sorry if I'm messing with you. No, no, no. Actually, that's a good question. I'm just thinking. I'm, I'm trying to articulate how to answer that. Uh, let me let me do that at the back of my head. Yes, please. Yeah, my question was, uh, well, what we're doing here seems to me like we are, if we draw the dependency in the form of a tree, it's like what we did here is that we have inverted the dependency tree, and everybody is interested in the like the ones that are on top of this uh, tree. So it seems like it, uh, like the definition of the inversion of control, but I don't see any dependency actually. Like, like if we're doing we're doing, doing something with the dependency, but not injection. We're we are not injecting it. We we have we have kind of made it possible, but we have not injected it. Well, injection is the is the instance of passing the dependent dependencies into into the dependent objects. So this, this line is injection. But, but I think it, it would be an attribute of that container which decides that when you, when you throw everything at it, then you would decide. No. So dependency injection has nothing to do with a container. The container is. So how do you differentiate its inversion of control? I'm just going to do that. So let that would be for a second. Somebody had a question. So the important thing to remember about dependency injection is. I can't repeat this enough, you inject stuff from the outside of the class. Okay? And I'm going to come back to your question, sir. Yeah, no problem. So the players or the actors in the dependency injection scenario are, there is a dependent object, there is a dependency, once again there's a dependent object, and then there's someone else who's going to inject. <laughs> and then DI, the, the technique of dependency injection does not mandate who this guy will be. It says nothing about it. Okay? And you don't need any framework to do DI. So dependency injection is different from the concept of a DI container. These are two different things. They're related. You can have dependency injection in your application without using any framework. This is what I'm trying to say. This is dependency injection, and a lot of people do it this way, like the main method I showed, and that's called a poor man's DI. You do everything yourself. The problem with that is, now, if you have to compose a coffee maker object with water and ground coffee, and let's say the water class had four constructors, you have to make a decision. Which of those do I need to invoke right now for the water class to make water? And if those one of the constructors that you chose to invoke has <coughs> six arguments. And two of them have, are objects. And the rest of the four are primitives. I mean, you need to make decisions. How do I construct water? If you try to do that in the client code, there's nothing wrong with it. That's the poor man's way of doing it. Wherever you do object composition, you're going to have 10 to 12 lines of code making a lot of decisions. So you want to delegate that to a specific software that is good, that's good at making those decisions. And that's where a container comes in. Some of the characteristics of dependency injection are the constructor 
or some part of the API or the dependent object has to make a disclosure saying, I need this, this, this. You, you better give me these if you want to use me. Without that, you can't use the object. And that's a good thing. Because if you did not have these dependencies declared somewhere in the API, either in a method as parameters or in the constructor or as a property publicly accessible to the outside world, you could have given someone the code for the coffee maker class into an assembly, and that class may not have had the water and the ground coffee class. If the coffee maker class needed I liquid, if the dependencies were declared as behaviors, I liquid and I powdered coffee, and you gave someone the coffee maker class, and it did not have a declaration of its dependencies, this, then you could accidentally give someone the assembly that had just the coffee maker and not implementations of iLiquid and ground coffee and the compiler would not catch it. So DI sort of uh, helps you catch stuff early on that you wouldn't have got if you didn't have that. Now that doesn't mean we go around just making everything a dependency. Okay, two things I want to emphasize. DI simply means a full disclosure of dependency and the injection of those. And injection doesn't have anything to do with a container or a fancy framework. This code adheres to the single responsibility principle. The coffee maker is now just making coffee. There's a loose coupling between the dependencies and the dependent object. And now, well, like you've seen Superman, right? With power comes responsibility. And the converse is also true. When you give away responsibility, you also give away power. This code now has to trust. While it has freed itself of a lot of responsibility, it has to trust the injector, whoever the injector is going to be, that the injector is going to be the right liquid and the right eye powered coffee implementation. So obviously, it's going to have guard clauses and exception handling inside, which I've omitted here. But there is some degree of control that's gone away. Hence, dependency injection is, is thought of as a manifestation of a broader phenomena known as inversion of control. The control has sort of been inverted. And this is difficult for a lot of people to grasp. It just means it's a fancy, fancy phrase that simply means that the traditional way that we think about things has sort of changed. This class is now helpless as to the injector could be some rogue code written by a less experienced developer who would probably put in petrol, which is an eye liquid. And this guy should then blow up with an exception like, I burn your house, you idiot exception, or something. <laughs> so we haven't got that here, but this code is amenable to such attacks. And that's, that's comes, that comes with the therapy and its injection. And that's what inversion of control means. You've given away stuff that you could control earlier. Earlier you were making the coffee, the coffee maker was making, making the power of coffee.